So one thing I've noticed since childhood is a lot of the Imma, especially from the Indo-Pak region. And when I say Indo-Pak, I say mostly Pakistani because they're the ones that I've come across in my community. They don't have, how can I say, they don't have accurate, they, why do you think, and if you go to the technical rule, and I only learned this recently, one kind of overarching thing that I'll say is, even if you've done hifs and you think that you read according to Tajweed, I will still recommend people to, if they've never formally studied the science of Tajweed properly with the proper Arabic terminology and with a proper tutor, it's something that I would still recommend because you realize there's a lot of small errors that you might be making because prior, I was under the impression that I don't need to learn the rulings because I already recite according to Tajweed. This was my kind of impression. Only once I started studying with you, and I'm still <laughs> only on lesson 16 of the course, which has taken me ages, but I'm just doing it alongside a lot of other things. You realize there's a lot of small things and also labeling all of the different techniques, all of the different rules. It helps you memorize them. So for example, one thing I noticed is the main thing that I think these uh, Pakistanis traditionally fall short on is, is it isti'ala, isti'ala, where all of the... Isti'ala and istifal. Yeah. So all of the non-heavy letters, and you have a very good Arabic acronym to remember the heavy letters, which is khussa dogutin kid. And see, these are all the little things that you learn. Alhamdulillah, like this is why I recommend people do this, because before... If someone asked me, yes, I would be able to go through in my mind and tell them the heavy letters, but it would take me a lot longer just because I didn't have this little nugget of kind of information. And that's one of the key concepts behind this project that I like to get to people because it's try and study from an expert or try and keep improving. Don't think that you're, even if you've done HIFS, don't think that you've reached the stage. There's always more to learn. Like even in this interview, I've learned a lot about the different Mus'hafs and stuff. And... I think, yeah, so getting back to the point, any of the non-heavy letters, they don't use, so uh, they read everything with a sort of mm -hmm. fat voice, as in yeah. like... Uh, heavy voice. They make all light letters heavy. Mm. Naam. So it'll be like uh, Rahman, Rahim, like that. Why do you think, what's the root cause there? Obviously the apparent cause is just, they haven't studied it, but why do you think it's like a systematic thing? where a lot of these alims, even those who have completed Nizami courses, they don't have this. Why do you think that is? What you just mentioned, even uh, let me add on some of what I have observed here in India. I offered Salah in one of the mosques and one of the Imams, the Imam in that particular mosque, he was saying, Allahu Akbar, Bar. So he was doing Kalkala on a letter where mm. There need not be any kalkala. No. And several things like what you just uh, mentioned. I observed this uh, Imam reading this for several years. He reads it this way. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So this is a very big mistake of Tajweed. And you have asked me regarding the reason why this is widespread. Of course, the first reason is that they have not studied Tajweed from the right tutors or from the right person, from the right sources. It's important that you study it from the one who is qualified for it. If you ask me in India, there are, you could say there are hundreds and thousands of teachers who go along teaching in the, in our communities and they're not qualified. One of the stars who came to teach us when we were just young, when he came in on the very first day, he made us read this way. He said, Allah ho la ilaha illa ho. So he was reading this way. So my parents, when they heard, they said that uh, even my parents were not aware of Tajweed in those days, but they recognized that this is obviously not the right way of reading Quran. So we told that particular Ustaz that we are going to switch to someone else. And we did that. So the problem is that there are hundreds of unqualified tutors who are going about teaching Quran according to that old fashioned and outdated way. This is not how Quran is read. Even in the old times, this was not how it was read. So mm. the 
main problem over in the indian subcontinent is that there is a very huge influence of urdu language since in india and pakistan it is urdu which is the mother tongue of muslims so the problem is that they have allowed urdu influence to come into their arabic learning so they say alif ba ta sa the right way of pronouncing these arabic letters is alif ba ta sa this is how you pronounce it in arabic but that that same urdu in, in urdu we say alif ba ta sa so mm. when they are learning arabic they are learning to read it in the same way and even let me give you another example for example when we speak in urdu if you take any light letter light arabic letter like hamza so in urdu we say ana jana khana mm. but when you come to arabic these people they allow that urdu influence to come on these light letters so they say for example amanu they say amanu rather it is mm. amanu amanu it has to be with a flat amanu. mouth Mm. Amen. So they mm. allow that Urdu influence to come into their Arabic reading as well. So this is mm. the biggest reason why this these mistakes are noticed amongst the aima or even the ulama or even the common people who mm. belong to the Indian subcontinent. Mm. So for that it is required that you learn Arabic, learn how to read Arabic, empty of any Urdu influence. Mm. You learn it the way it is spoken in Arabic. for example yeah. if you want to learn any language if you want to learn how to speak in english so you will refer to how a native english speaker speaks mm. you won't just get started with speaking english the way you want rather you will refer to how the native people are speaking and you will try your best to imitate that that's what comes even when it comes to quran learning so you have to read it the way it is supposed to be read in the arabic language yes i think you make a very good point about the urdu influence because i was once watching one of these tv shows where it's a call in show where people recite the quran and the presenter he corrects them and on almost 95% of the callers let's say they were like middle aged like pakistanis the same advice was aap urdu lehje mein na but in like uh, yani uh, in english don't read in the uh, urdu accent and but they it also happens when some of these they know arabic but they still speak the arabic in the urdu accent so when they're giving the giving an example of a certain hadith or a certain uh, quote that an arabic writer or scholar wrote even then when they quote it they uh, read it in urdu yani they'll say hada yeah uh, mm-hmm. that's not a good example but you know what i'm trying to say yeah exactly i can understand but, yeah so my thing was like you know how with other things it's more precise and technical as in hadith science or like aqida it has to be precise they can't move on but with tajweed i feel like there's some slack in the system because they managed to progress at that level and obviously the ruling is that you should recite in the way the quran was revealed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right and it's like an obligation to try and do this and so i feel like that's what was puzzling me a little bit because it doesn't seem and a lot of these errors how in your course mashallah you have this about lahnul jufi jali and lahnul khafi naam and like the hidden mistakes but some of, most of these aren't hidden mistakes they're the apparent ones because if they're not doing the apparent ones they definitely make some of the other mistakes where there's the rules on the letter ra how there's a light ra tarqiq and how there's a heavy ra they most definitely don't do that because they're not even doing isti'la as in yeah so that's what was on my mind you've addressed it nicely bismillahir rahmanir rahim